Hey guys, it's Sydney. Welcome back to my channel. And today we'll be talking about Bo Burnham's, what's it called? Eighth grade. <laughs> I know that Bo Burnham is not the best person. Um, he has like a racist past. I don't know anything other than that about him. Is that like the racist past in eighth grade? I didn't watch Inside. I didn't listen to Inside. I don't know much about him. I just know that he was really racist. So yeah, I am not praising him. I am praising the movie. Okay. So yeah. It's a good movie. I cannot lie, y'all. I cannot lie. <laughs> Today, we'll be talking about Bo Burnham's eighth grade, okay? I cried. I had a lot of thoughts while watching this movie. Yes, last night. Okay. Well, first of all, let me give you the backstory of my experience with this movie. Eighth grade, quarantine happened, right? Quarantine happened, COVID happened, right? And I was, and I was in my Timothy Chalamet era, right? And the Timothy Chalamet era led me to Lady Bird. And Lady Bird led me to eighth grade. Okay. So I saw eighth grade. I watched like half of eighth grade, but I turned it off because of how uncomfortable it was making me. Three years? <laughs> it's definitely three years because it was 2020. Is that like three years later? I'm in junior high school now. And I watched it last night at 11 p.m., finished it at 1 a.m. I watched it. And that's. That's a movie, and I'm glad I didn't watch it in eighth grade because I wouldn't be able to fully like appreciate it. I I have notes this time. I have a script. Okay, it, yeah, yeah, it's good professional. Okay, I had a pretty good time in middle school. You know, I had I had friends. I had a good, I had good friends. You know, I had some people that didn't like me, but they didn't voice that. It's, like seventh grade was a very polarizing year for me. Either people loved me or they hated me. And, and I get why. I get why because I was, I could be quite annoying. And I had a lot of embarrassing moments. Like I tried out for a solo in chorus and I started crying because I have horrible stage fright. I've got it over it now. I'm way better with my um, stage fright now. Like I still get really nervous, but I just power through it, through it now. But before I would cry, I would literally cry, like start bawling. So yeah, that was <laughs> embarrassing. And of course it's middle school, you know. This this movie, it tackles every aspect of middle school. You know, it tackles all the hormones, the horniness, like one of the beginning scenes, dude was during sex ed class. <laughs> that never happened to me. That never happened in, in my classroom. I was like harassed, but I had no guys truly interested in me, you know, like, like nobody expressed it because of the way I acted, <laughs> and I was very rude to guys, I still am, I'm sorry y'all, like I'm sorry, y'all never catch any flight for me because I hate y'all, for real, it's because of my experience with y'all from, element from elementary school, if you want to blame anybody, blame them, blame them, okay? So, as of, ooh. As I said, I had a very abrasive personality I, and a pulverizing personality. You either loved me or you hated me. It was, and I feel like that still reigns true to this day. You know, people, they love me. People don't like me. I I just found that out. People don't like me. I don't know why people don't like me. Like I, I don't know. I'm real. <laughs> people hate how real I am. Like I don't know. Like when you. <laughs> I promise we'll eventually start talking about eighth grade. I just have to give y'all a background on my experience in eighth grade, and you have to know how I was and how different I kind like. I was, I'm very different from the main character, especially in eighth grade. Maybe in elementary school, I was similar to the main character. But even though I had a very different personality, I still had a similar experience, you know? So it's just, it's just still relatable. During middle school, I knew who I was. 
and I knew how I acted and I was like I was I I was having fun and I did not let anybody distract me from that fun you know distract me from my friends distract me from everything that's going on because I let that happen in elementary school I was like nobody's gonna stop all, all over me nobody's gonna make me change I'm not gonna change myself for other people I'm just gonna be myself so I did that and I'm still doing it like what I look like what I look like so like I took that and I see this in eighth grade and she is kind of the complete opposite of how I was she's quiet she she doesn't try to cause like any attention she doesn't try to like put attention on herself the one scene that really hit me like other than the back the car seat scene and um the car not the car seat scene the car scene and the um scene with her and her father at the lawn fire was a scene when she was walking out to the pool i felt everything because the whole section in here where i was talking about the pool scene and how it really hit hard for me because when i was in middle school i wasn't overly self-conscious but i definitely was aware of my body like i wasn't like hyper aware i wasn't counting calories i wasn't doing all that but I definitely would look at myself and be like, why do I look like this? But like, it was just basic stuff, like my stomach and my hips. Like I was just like, I just felt like I didn't look like other people. And I was like, why don't I look like that? But then I was like, man, forget them. <laughs> like, it was, it was, oh my gosh, I'm sorry y'all. I hit the bike, I hit the bike. I was like a fat kid. Like, I won't fat, but like, I was fat. Like, <laughs> so I still had that mindset in me. And she has that mindset where her body isn't perfect and isn't what the rest of the kids out there had. Like, the rest of the kids out there were skinny as ever, right? And she wasn't that. Like, she was just like, she was mid sized. Like, I'm mid sized. I was mid sized. So, like, I'm not, I'm not skinny. And she had an ugly baby suit on. That baby suit was so ugly. That's not the point. That's not the point. But like, <laughs> I just felt that, that feeling that I do not belong here. And not only do I feel like I don't belong, I look like I don't belong, okay? I was invited here out of pity. You know, like, she had no friends. She knew she had no friends. When the popular girl's mom was kind of like forced, forced, forced to invite her, she felt like a rush, but then she realized that the popular girl didn't invite her. Her mom did. And this is sitting in the back of her head this entire time, I feel like. You know? And that Aiden guy, I know so many Aidens. There are so many Aidens out in the world that are low down, dirty scrubs. 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 No, I don't want no scrub. A scrub as a guy that can't get no love from me. But yeah, there are so many Aiden's out the way. The thing is, oh my gosh, I just remembered the scene. The scene where she was on his Instagram pretending to kiss him with her hand. Oh my God. It just, it hit so many points where it's like in your head. It's like, oh my gosh. It's like, why is she doing this? And they're like, oh, I get why she's doing this. Like, you get it all. You you understand. It's so embarrassing, but you understand why this is happening. Because you were once there. Even though I was never scrolling through anybody's Instagram kissing my head. But, like, you, you, you feel the feeling. It wasn't annoying. It wasn't annoying. She, the way she treated her father was the only thing that annoyed me. Because when you're older, you see that he's trying. He's trying so hard. Like, when the mother left, he, he's raising a daughter on his own as a man. He was raising a daughter on his own as a man. I want to elaborate on this a little more by, like, he's raising a daughter as a man. Like, you know, there are a lot of social norms, gender norms, that a lot of men don't really understand and know, and that only another woman could, like, teach another woman, you know? So it's important for a daughter to have a mother in life but even if she doesn't have a mother in his in her life he is doing so well and he is trying so hard and i will elaborate more but yes i just wanted to clear that up right now but that scene 
at the bonfire I, that's when i cried that's when i cried because i was like oh my god i love a flawed yet wholesome father-daughter relationship i love it when the do the father understands what the daughter is feeling doesn't penalize her for it but like tries to help her through it like most fathers would be like oh you're being disrespectful oh you're doing this oh you're doing that they won't try to work through the, the daughter's emotion to try to understand her her father understood her tried to understand her i don't think he understood her fully because there's no way you can just understand a person fully like you know like especially your child you're not going to be able to understand it especially since she's in middle school she's and you're not going to be able to understand it. you know that's just a day giveaway but it's it's really beautiful how it went down like i was just crying i was crying but yeah let's go like i just wanted to talk about the father-daughter relationship and let's talk about how low down low down that one what's his name what's his name mama let's research riley riley okay riley that low down dusty bear riley that grow 18 year old he's 18 years old he's probably 18 17 years old talk to a 13 year old talk talk to a 13 year old weird weird and then he was like and then yo the manipulation was crazy it was like i was like oh my god oh my god the thing is i know people that went through this type of thing like I know multiple people that went through this type of thing in eighth grade and in middle school in freshman year. And I'm just like, wow, I don't know how y'all endured this. I don't know how y'all went through this. Cause seeing it on screen is uncomfortable. I was just sitting there like like disgusted. I was like, ugh. Like I felt grossed out. And she and she kept saying, sorry, sorry. Like she was in the wrong that was in the wrong. When he knew that he was the one in the wrong. That's why he was like, stop apologizing. Because he knew he was wrong. He knew he was wrong. And I really love this movie because it explores so many aspects. And it goes at this, like, fast pace because this is how things are happening to her. Everything is so fast. And people don't understand how fast time goes, how fast people grow up. Like, people don't understand that. Like, so many things can happen in a week. So many things can happen in a day. So many things happen in a night. Your life can change in a night. Like, if Riley succeeded in pressuring her and coercing her, her life would have been changed that night, you know? If she didn't put her foot down, say that she was very uncomfortable, she did not want to do it. And if he forced her, it, like, it could have been even worse. Like, her, like it would have changed the trajectory of her life, you know? It could have put her even further in her shell or forced her to like could have been worse it could have took her down uh what's it called bit path <laughs> uh horrible experiences because these experiences some of them are horrible some of them are horrible like the riley thing that was that was gross but a lot of them i she she takes from it and at the end where she hangs out with gabe that was a true friendship a wholesome friendship <laughs> Where they were just nervous to see each other and nervous and excited to talk to each other. It was so beautiful. I love that moment. And then when she was just talking to her dad in the car about it. Oh my god! I love that. I love that movie. I love this movie so much. That's why I got it got five stars on my letterbox. I'm sorry. Like this is the type of movie I want to rewatch. You know, right after finishing. Like I wanted to rewatch it right after finishing, but I had to go to bed. You know, and I started Crazy Stupid Love. I did not finish it. But Crazy Stupid Love is pretty good. So I feel like that wraps up all my thoughts on eighth grade. This was more organized than my other my thoughts videos, but it was definitely still chaotic. So I'll work on my form with that. I just want to review movies that I have a lot to talk about, you know. Next or my thoughts may be the taxi driver, but I'm unsure. I may just talk about it in my um February watches video but yeah thank you guys for watching me um uh, may you have a great rest of your Saturday and week until I see you again bye